here's what I do the day after a race. You gotta hydrate. The elastic laces were too tight, so I believe I have a remedy for that. Morning, Trainiacs. Damn near afternoon, actually. Almost nine o'clock and I'm just getting to the pool because yesterday was Olympic distance race, which thanks to the motivation of all you Trainiacs, killed personal best 204.36. It was a short bike course, 37K bike course, but still pumped. So today, the day after a race, for me, all about recovery. It's all about getting my body recovered as soon as possible so that I can get back to training as soon as possible. And I'm not ready to train today. Like if my brain were a person right now, it would have a look on its face like, yeah, smashed up. After almost any race that I do, I've got like pounding headache the next morning and I'm just not that motivated. So the sooner we can get our bodies back in the mode to train, the sooner we can keep training, the more we can get fast. And then that race that you do is actually like something that'll make you a lot faster because you're pushing your body into a really deep, deep intensity that is gonna make you faster if you soak up all that training really quickly and then continue to train. If you just like go and take training off, you're in trouble, you're gonna get slower. So here's what I do the day after a race. Number one, sleep. Oh yeah. I turn my alarm off and I don't even worry about when I gotta wake up. Number two, as you can see, I still train, I do something. I am a really big fan of doing some light exercise the day after a race so that the muscles can't really settle and like start getting sore and you get that day after or even the two days after soreness, you're still keeping them nice and loose. That's not to say that I'm out here gonna smash myself as you will see, but my protocol for after a big race is typically commute to work by bike, make sure that I do that, and come in for a nice light swim. The cold water I find really helps and the no impact workout really helps. But I take the swim that we normally do of three to 4,000 meters and I chop it way down to maybe just a thousand. Check it out. Oh, and you better believe these recovery days are floaty pants days. And then food and drink is a big aspect of recovering really quickly. You gotta hydrate. During the race, you probably went through a ton of fluids. It's actually hard to replace all of the fluids that your body is losing during that race. And then after, if you drink a ton of fluids, you're probably gonna pee out a bunch of it. So rehydrating is like a multiple day process. So in here, I got my electrolyte mix. Down here, I have a smoothie. You wanna get as many nutrients and minerals and vitamins and just good shirt in your body as you possibly can. And a shake or a smoothie or green juice or something like that is a really good way to do it because it's like, you can concentrate a whole ton of good stuff in here and it's like pre-digested. So that means that your body doesn't have to work as hard to get it all into your system so you're gonna absorb more of it. And it's delicious. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the next thing that I'm really into after a really hard workout or a race, because your body is built up so much like lactic acid and your muscles have been torn down a lot, there's a lot of, I don't know, let's just call it gunk in your legs and you need to get your body circulating that through, working it through to start flushing it out. Now, if you've been around the channel for more than about five days, you can see the video that I did, bam, right up there, about these new compression boots that I got from RP Sports. Big fan in the five days that I've had them. So I threw these on yesterday for about 40 minutes. I'm throwing them on today again. We'll go through another cycle and it's all just to make sure that the body is circulating everything through and it's not letting things settle before I start getting sore. Session with these right now. 
Right, Gracie? They don't have them for doggies. I'm sorry. I think you'd love them. You like sitting still for long periods of time, right? Now, where do things like ice baths and anti-inflammatories come into play? Well, the thing about both ice baths and anti-inflammatories is that they're intended to take the inflammation out of you in a real hurry. And that inflammation process, inflammatory process, is very important to getting faster. It's, it's part of the breaking down and building up process. So I tend to reserve things like ice baths, which I do use for emergencies only. Like, let's say I know I'm gonna be really sore the next day and I've either got a big workout or I've got a race coming up or I'm gonna be on my feet all day, maybe at work and I can't be sore for that. Yeah, I might fire in an ice bath knowing that I'm not going to be improving myself as much as I would if I just toughed it out and went through the pain. Now, I look at anti-inflammatories as like emergencies only. Yeah, they do the same thing. They take away the pain, they take away the inflammation, but a big part about this is that it eats away your stomach. Most anti-inflammatories have a bit of a corrosive effect on your stomach, and in my case, I've actually full on developed a stomach ulcer from taking too much anti-inflammatories in the past, and now if I take them, I'll have like keeling over, check my life insurance kind of pain. Yeah, like I actually topped up my life insurance after a bad spout with anti-inflammatories last summer from one day of taking them. Do I take anti-inflammatories? Yeah, sometimes, like maybe once a year, but emergencies only. I typically try to stay away from things that falsely or like superficially take away the inflammation. And if I do it, it's with more natural things like an ice bath. Ice bath hurts though. Now to end off with this raw raw, Taryn killed the race yesterday and is a genius because a race plan went according to plan. Uh, no, that's not actually the case. I had one massive oversight and I think in every triathlon or in a lot of training cases, you can learn something every single time. Pete, you're gonna knock over the camera. You can learn something from your setup or your body or your race strategy. In this case, my right foot on the run basically fell asleep, had no circulation because I think the elastic laces were too tight. So I believe I have a remedy for that. If your elastic laces are too tight, try this. You can take the elastic laces out and basically just skip the first little eye hole in your shoe and that'll get you enough slack that you can have a little bit of, a little bit more room in that shoe there. And like with elastic laces, it has to be not nearly as tight as you think it is because that compression is like, it's so stationary that it can really quickly cut off your circulation. I've done this before with other shoes that didn't have a short enough like tongue to be able to make these elastic laces work. And this is fine. There you go. We learned something today. All right. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Peter Dinklage.